What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Punk Rock Radar. Today, we are doing the Fearless Records tier list. We're going to talk about every Fearless album between 1995 and 2003. The only ones we skipped are EPs, singles, and if a band had multiple albums that we felt all fell into the same tier, then we skipped a couple of the albums. We did just one. And I'm joined today by Dylan, a.k.a. Screeching Bottle Rocket from DyingScene.com. How you doing, man? I'm absolutely terrible, to be completely honest with you, but let's make it better. All right, well, hopefully, hopefully you like Fearless Records in the in the 90s. I think a lot of us do, and uh, they'll cheer you up. So, Dylan, I'm gonna, I'll let you uh, do the first one here. We've got Glue Gun. Their 1995 album, The Scene, is not for sale. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one, the first full-length album on Fearless? The scene. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, I heard of these guys, but I never listened to them like a long time ago. Um, I didn't know they were a fearless band, um, but I was pretty impressed by this album uh, for a band that's not very talked about. So I put it in my A tier. I think it's one of the more West Coast hardcore style uh, albums that Fearless put out. Um, it's the only one that really sounds like this. Uh, songs that really stuck out, stuck out to me were uh, Drug Life and No Not Ever. So yeah, pretty uh, badass album. Yeah, I'm going A on this too. I, I had this CD back in the day. Uh, it reminds me of like the Doctor Strange stuff around this time. And like it's heavy skate punk. It's one of the better ones on the list. So I'll, I'm right there with you. And I didn't get too far, but I didn't tell people what we're doing here we're ranking them s through f this time we added an extra tier because we're doing 26 or 27 albums so we're gonna put a couple in every tier i think four in every tier maybe five in some so dylan let's move on to album number two i believe the band name is pronounced blunt maybe blount the album is trauma this is an album that i think two people have commented on off the radar that we should do um, what are your thoughts on this one here? 1996. I do think it's blunt considering the album title. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I would go blunt otherwise, but yeah, it's called trauma. So yeah, if they spell it weird. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't like this album that much. Um, the songs are decent. Like the style is there, but. I just don't like the like sound of it. Like uh, sonically, it's not a very like high quality recording. It just sounds kind of rough. Um, I like the dude's voice, the singer, but uh, I don't know. It's a it's a pretty unremarkable album. The the co the cover art's cool. Reminds me of like uh, Ramones' "We're Out of Here." A lot of Epitaph stuff from this era. Uh, C C for Blunt. All right, I'm going one higher than you. I'm going B. Uh, I, I used to really like this one. I had this one, too, back in the day. Uh, the guitars remind me of a band we're going to hit a little later, 30 Foot Fall. Uh, it's it's kind of like solid by the numbers skate punk, but I, I enjoy it. I think there's some good songs on here. I think, um, what is it called? I just had it pulled up. I think World of Seclusion. Yeah, the yeah, opener. The opener is a, a really good track. That's, that's my recommendation. That's the clip we'll play here. And... I'll lead us into the next one. We've got uh, the White Caps. This album's called Blown in the USA. And the White Caps are one of those bands. We just took one album. I, I don't know about you, Dylan, but this this is going in my F tier. Uh, I think, and I, I did a little research on here, and uh, Bob Becker, the, the original, the owner of Fearless before he sold it to Concord Music, he was in this band. So I was like, how did this band get so many <sighs> records out on Fearless Records? There you go. There's the reason. Uh, so this is in my F tier. I, I don't really care for this album at all. Uh, what about you? Yeah, uh, I didn't know that, but I definitely <laughs> believe you. Uh, this is one of those nepotism signings, I think. Uh, these guys fucking suck, dude. Um, it's so, it doesn't sound like a 90s punk band. Like, this sounds like some, like, real, like, early 80s shit. Like, it, 
I don't know what they were doing, but they fucking suck. So, yeah, F. <laughs> and I'm glad we took the other record off here because they both fucking suck. Yeah, like, I, I was getting through this one. And I was like, man, I got two or three more of these this band's records to get through. That's that's when we made the decision. Like, uh, one White Caps record is just enough. Yeah, one uh, too many. So let's move on. We got a, a popular band up next. We've got the Aquabats, their 1995 album, The Return of the Aquabats. Dylan, I'll, I'll let you walk us through this one because I'm curious what you're going to do with this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, aside from Mast Intruder, I'm not a big fan of, like, gimmicky bands who, you know, they, they have, like, a whole shtick and they make it, they build their whole image around that. Uh, so I'm not a huge Aquabats guy. I don't think they're bad, but just they get a little grating after a while, you know? Um, I think it's a pretty good album. I think it's one of their better albums. I uh, put it in the C tier. Um... But, I mean, if, if I had to listen to, like, a ska record, like, this would not be, like, in my, like, top 100 that I would go to. So, it's a C. Yeah, I'm actually going one lower than you. I, I'm worried about what people are going to think about this. I know people love this album, but I was skipping almost every song on this. I just, I just didn't was, vibe with it. Was Travis Barker in the band on this album, or had he already left? Yeah, he would have been in there for this one. I think this one and then the one after, I think he he's in. But uh, Travis Barker, I don't think writes the songs on here. That and that's the no. But <laughs> I thought it was noteworthy. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, it's a pretty weak album overall, and I know people will be offended, but that's okay. You know, these are our rankings. You could put yours down below. So moving on, Dylan, I, we've got another uh, raunchy release from Fearless. We've got the Grabbers. The hand you're dealt. Uh, this one, if you were like a PC punk, if you're easily offended, I would I would definitely skip this one. It reminds me of like a like a B gutter movie mouth. gutter mouth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I don't I don't hate it. I think I'm gonna go D on it. I had it in uh, I had it in C, but I bumped it down last minute because we couldn't find the Chuck album. Uh, so I'm going D. What about you on the grabbers? I don't think it's that, uh, it's not that raunchy, and the lyrics are pretty, they're trying to be edgy, but, like, I don't think they really succeed at it, like, it's like TVMA gutter mouth, you know, uh, they're trying real hard to be gutter mouth, uh, mm -hmm. I hear some, like, swing and utters type feel to it a little bit, um, on some, like, the, the faux country rock stuff that they do i think it's an okay album i would i'm not gonna listen to it ever again most likely uh i put it in c also i was a little more forgiving of its shortcomings yeah i, I feel like c was the right spot I just at last minute i just moved it to d i don't feel great about it because there were some songs i was kind of s smiling at gig i don't know but yeah. overall i mean like, musically yeah. it's pretty strong uh, but I, I feel like they just kind of swung and miss on trying to be, you know, as edgy as a band like Gutter Mouth. Like, the songs just aren't that offensive. Yeah, the clip I'm picking, I think, is called Come Drunk. So maybe a bad example for that, <laughs> but we'll see. All right, so moving in the uh, opposite direction here, we got Straight Faced. We've got their album Broken. Uh, I think this was one that we took off a couple also. Uh, initially, Dylan, I didn't really care for this band or this uh this album in general but overall like after i listened to it a few times i was finding a few, like a few interesting riffs and it it broke up a lot of the sound that we're listening to on these early ones so i'm actually going c on here I, I i thought like uh quite a few songs i was you know rocking out to a decent album so right in the middle i'll go and see i know you don't like it i can tell by your face where are you putting it Dude, I hate to compare every band to a more, like, established band, but these guys just sound like fucking, like, great value, like, agnostic front. Like, especially the singer sounds like he's trying so hard to sound like uh, Roger Moret or however you pronounce it, from Agnostic Front. 
um i couldn't get through the whole the whole album um i mean if if i was into this kind of like you know like tough guy hardcore i don't know if these guys are a straight edge band um but they have that kind of feel if i was into that kind of stuff i mean i probably this would be a decent album but i'm really not uh this is uh my first d tier album yeah, I definitely get that. I, I always mix up this band with um, the one that uh, Scott Radinsky was in, the straight, Scared Straight. I always mix those two bands up. But uh, Dylan, I'll let you walk us through this next one because you featured this band on and off the radar episode. I know you're fond of them. So Drunken Public tapped out from 96. What are your thoughts? <laughs> This is a great album. Uh, yeah, this this one, uh, this is probably one of the first Fearless Records albums I ever heard. Um, so this is my first S-tier album. Um, I don't think there's anything bad on here. I, lo- I love all the songs. Enemies is great. Uh, I listened to it a lot more in the last few weeks, and I'm able to name specific songs that I really like now. So, uh, enemies, meaningless, every day, drifting away. I I think drifting away might be my favorite um, song on the album now, having listened to it a few more times. But uh, yeah, I think this this goes toe to, to toe with like a lot of other '90s punk records. Yeah. So I don't know how because I was like a pretty big fearless fanboy back in the day. I somehow missed this album until you brought it up. I think you know for the episode. But like over the last few weeks or months of it's been, this is this is definitely one of the best albums on Fearless. I, I'm moving it all the way up to A, which I didn't see, which I didn't see happening. But yeah, Dylan's 100 percent right. If you haven't listened to this album, you like the 90s skate pop punk style, uh, definitely go check this one out. Uh, Dylan, I, I think you might disagree with me here. You hate my comparisons, but I hear a lot of like Dude Ranch and the guitars and a little bit of like the Atari's, the first Atari's albums anywhere, anywhere but here. Uh, when I'm listening to this album, I hear little pieces of that. Uh, any thoughts about that, or am I totally wrong? At least you didn't say the singer sounded like uh, Fat Mike, so <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll allow it. All right, so moving on here, we've got a band that I've referenced several times on uh, Off the Radar. I don't know how, when, why I became a huge 30 Foot Fall fan, but I've been big into these guys since the late 90s. Uh, this is my second favorite 30 foot fall album. The album I featured on off the radar was the one after this ever evolving, never evolving, but, uh, acne one, four, three, uh, I'm going to go a tier on this. I don't have a lot of the songs pinned. I don't know why, but I think play it by year is my favorite song. And, uh, then we've got, we've got a Billy Joel cover on the end. Always good. And punk rocks in your head, I think is their most popular song. So I'm going a on acne one, four, three. What about you? I completely agree, actually, uh, including my favorite 30 Foot Fall record uh, is the same as yours. Uh, I think that one was on Nitro. Yeah, um, Yeah, this is an awesome album, uh, a really strong de- debut album. I think it's better than most of their uh, records, aside from ne- Ever Revolving, whatever the title is. Um, so yeah, I have it in the A tier also. Um, these guys are super underrated. Um, I think the only song I really am not completely sold on here is the first. What's the the song about? Uh, it's like peeing or something. Yeah, I, I can't you, pee. And, yeah, I don't really like that yeah. song that much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's super super good album. Uh, these guys are on. Uh, they just signed a People of Punk Rock Records, and they're working on new music and uh, some of their uh later stuff is getting reissued so that should be cool yeah the doppler effect the one that i think they self-released it in like oh two or oh three that one's underrated too that's that's a cool one to check out if you have it if they are working on something i really hope they are because it's been 20 years since we've got anything from them so fingers crossed other than that ep the jesus elvis richard petty so dylan let's move on here we've got uh some jersey boys Probably one of the most popular bands I think on the we're gonna do today. We got Big Wig, uh, Unmerry Melodies, 
What are you going to do with this one? I'm going to catch some heat here, but uh, <laughs> I've never really been into Big Wig, especially I don't I don't like Tom Petta's voice that much. Uh, this is, uh, I can definitely hear where, like, band, like, they're a very influential band, I think, um, especially, like, a Wilhelm Scream, I think, uh, is pretty heavily influenced by Big Wig, so thank you for, for that, Big Wig, for... I like Wilhelm. They're fucking awesome. Um, I think this is probably their weakest album, honestly. Uh, it's pretty un unpolished, uh, pretty rough around the edges. It's not bad, um, but I don't really listen to it ever. So this one's a B for me. Oh, okay. You got me all like, I thought you were going to go like C or D based on what you were saying. I I'll take a B. It's it's definitely not my favorite Big Wig album, but like you know, Lewis will tell you there was like a point where I probably would have told people Big Wig was my favorite band. Like, I I saw them probably twenty or thirty times in a two year span, uh, in like two thousand two thousand one. Uh, but I'm gonna go A here. Um, I think they have a much better album coming up. Uh, this one this one's pretty good. You know, Girl in the Green Jacket, a couple of uh, other. You know that they play uh, at their shows, so I'll go A on Big Wig on Merry Melodies. So let's move on here. We got um, we're skipping Chuck. By the way, Chuck Westward Ho. I had it on the list for some reason. That is the lone album on here that is not on Spotify. It's not anywhere. I don't know if he was if uh, if uh, what's some his name kind of dispute or something. Yeah, I don't know. With the like, label maybe. Fearless wanted to hang out to that, hang on to that one while they sold everything else to Concord Music, <laughs> but they're like, you can't have Chuck. That, that that's the rule. But uh, Dylan, let's move on to uh, Bickley. Uh, their first album on here, we got Pogo a Go Go from 1998. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, it was the dude who ran the label in this band, too, because these guys also <laughs> blow fucking ass, man. Uh, this is another F tier. Um, yeah, it's a bad album. Uh, it's a very bad album. That's all I got to say about it. Um, well, one more thing, actually. One, one piece of uh, analysis here. It sounds a lot like the early Queers stuff with uh, Wimpy on vocals. But not as good, not nearly as good. Yeah, see, I I didn't own this CD. I own the other Bickley CD that we're gonna do a little later on. But this one, you're you're right. This is not a great album. I mean, Pink Power Rangers is kind of funny, but the vocals are very South Park to me. That's what I kept hearing. Uh, I don't hate this, but I'm going to go. I think D as well. On Bickley, it breaks my heart because I, I did like these guys back in the back in the day, but this album just not doing it for me anymore at all. So let's keep it going. I think we're almost halfway. We've got Thirty Foot Fall again. We're gonna do Divided We Stand. I believe this one came out before Acme One Four Three. I think this is a reissue, uh, but this has a release date of nineteen ninety eight, and this is Thirty Foot Fall is probably heaviest, fastest album, but. It's to me this is their worst album and it's not even close. There's there's some good songs on here but overall it's tough cuz I don't want to put the same band in the same tiers. So I'm going to go I'm going to go B on here. It's still a good album but it's it's the worst 30 foot fall and it's not even close to as good as Acme 143. So what do you think, Dylan? Yeah, I agree. Um I was not aware that this was like a uh, later in the discography because it was a re reissue or whatever. I um, could be wrong. I, I did not you, fact check I, that. I, I, I'm inclined to believe that based on how it sounds. Um, I do think it is a pretty big downgrade from Acme, um, and I agree that it is their worst. Having said that, it's not a bad album. It's just uh, very... Like, they they haven't really refined their sound at this point. Uh, the later stuff they did was not poppy, really, but slightly more melodic. And, like, it seemed like there was more of a focus on what kind of sound they wanted to go for. So, uh, I have it in the B tier. So, not like a massive downgrade, but a slight downgrade for me. 
Yeah, we're, we're staying like pretty in sync. And Dylan, unless unless you've got a huge surprise, I mean, we I don't think we've ever talked about this band, but I feel like we're gonna see eye to eye on at the drive in with their in casino out album. But take it away. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I went into it not wanting to like it because I'm really not a post-hardcore uh, appreciator uh, by any means. I, I like the kind of music I like, and I'm pretty stubborn about that. Um, but having said that, I mean, I kind of came around to it a little bit as I listened to it. Obviously, these guys are, like, incredible musicians, um, and I think this is a very well-put-together album. Um if I was a fan of this kind of music, then uh, this would probably be one of my favorite records. Uh, having, s- but I'm not. Uh, I don't think it's bad though, so I don't want to be too harsh to it and like shit on it. Uh, so I, I put it in the B. Damn. Because uh, uh, I don't know. I heard like it sounds good. Like it's not something I'm gonna listen to all the time, but. Um, as far as post hardcore goes, I think this is uh, these guys are pretty top notch. Okay, well, I I really you gotta respect it. I didn't see that coming, man. I see when we did um, a few weeks ago, we did the major label tier list, and I I listened to the album with one arm scissor, relationship of command, a lot, and I could not get into it whatsoever. So. I had like this kind of preconceived notion about this album and I listened to the whole thing and I don't know. I just don't like it either. I, I, there's not a single song that I really wanted to come back to. So respect the band. Like you said, you know, they're influential, they're talented, but it's, it's going to my F tier, my personal list. I'm putting it uh, down in the basement in the F tier. Just, I don't really care for this band uh, at all. So let's move on. Let's get back into the uh, standard nineties fearless uh, affair here. We've got Bickley and their incredibly classy uh, album cover, Kiss the Bunny. A little bit genius, so let's give it to them. Uh, this is the one I owned back in the day. I think Roommate 29 is a really good song. I think Calling All Punks is decent. Uh, there, there's a, there's some gems on here. I mean, this isn't like, uh, it's not going to blow you away if you don't like this style, but I think this is a decent album, and it's going to go on my beat tier. I, I don't know if... Uh, uh, at the drive-in and Bickley are going to be like our counter polls for this uh, video. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's a little bit of an upgrade from the first one. The cover art is just fucking <laughs> disturbing. Just what a <laughs> what a weird image. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a little better. Um, Calling All Punks is fun. I still don't like the singer. Uh, D tier. Okay, that's where I thought you were gonna go. Yeah, Calling All Punks. Roommate Twenty Nine, man, it's pretty funny. But all right, let's let's move on. Here's here's where we sit so far. I believe we are at the halfway point, if not very very close uh, to the halfway point. And here we go. We've got a heavy hitter here. We've got Gob. Uh, how far shall it takes you? This is probably in my top two or three albums on the on uh, the tier list. I'm a huge Gob fan. I don't think they really have a bad record. I know the stuff gets a little dicey uh, later on, but on these days is my favorite Gob song. Uh, you've got 236 East Broadway, Beauville, Self Appointed Leader, uh, License from a Serial Box is another classic. Like uh, even the cover of Painted Black is awesome. This is an S tier for me. It's my first S. So, uh, Dylan, I'll pass it to you. What are your thoughts on this Gob record? Yeah, this is another S for me. Um, this is my favorite Gob album. I don't like their poppier shit. Um, this is more skate punk. I think it's great. Um East Broadway on these days, the man stand and deliver. Uh, I like this better than a lot of some 41 stuff, um, even. So, yeah, definite S tier for me. That's another surprise for me. I didn't think you liked these guys because you didn't know. Uh, I hear you calling, but yeah, this is a this is a pretty 
there's a pretty big jump off between like their skate punk stuff and the next album, The World According to Gob. So if you skip Gob, if you've only heard like Foot and Mouth Disease and uh, World According to Gob, then go check this one out. If you're watching this and you haven't really listened to it, this is their like this is their fastest album. The one before this is really good too. Uh, I think that one's on Land Speed Record, but go check that one out too. So let's move on to another, uh, I think, throwaway Fearless band. This the, this band had like four or five albums on the list. We had to cut it to one. I think this one is the best, but it, that's not saying much. Dylan, this is an F tier band album for me. Lonely Kings. What if? What do you? What are your thoughts on it? This is the the owner's nephew's <laughs> band right here. <laughs> Yeah, these guys blow. Um, There's so many records, too. They have, like, five uh, albums. They just kept going. This is, this is like, uh, like maybe they're, like, rich kids, and their parents greased some gears and got them on the label, and nobody nobody had the heart to tell them that they sucked. Um, yeah, the singer especially can't carry a tune uh that's it's pretty bad so yeah this is f tier all right so we, we're on the same page again we're back all right so let's move on guys if you haven't heard of lonely kings just keep never hearing of them that cover art is awful <laughs> yeah all right so moving along here dylan i'll let you take us into this one this is a band lewis picked for off the radar we got beefcake their lone album rejected from 1999 what are your thoughts Man, I swear, to, I hope you, I'm sure you're going to agree with this. David Jones from Enemy U, the singer sounds exactly yeah. like him. I, I f- almost feel like I kept like double and triple checking Discogs to see if <laughs> David Jones was credited as uh, being the singer on this album. It's so crazy. I'd never heard anyone else sound like him, uh, but this guy sounds exactly like him. Uh, this one was re- really tough, man. Uh, I had it in my S, but a, a later album bumped it out just barely. Um, so it it's my favorite of the A's for me. Um, it's so good, dude. It's so yeah. fucking good. Uh, Little Bus, Hungover, Unemployment. Unemployment's awesome. Uh, Subliminal Messages, I like. That's like the slow song, but it's real goofy and fun. And fuck them. Yeah, hey. I, I'm going to ask, dude. This is this is another one of my favorite albums. And so these guys, they're from like right around where I grew up, like literally right across the river. And we we saw them. I told this story in the other video, but I'll say it again because it's appropriate here. Uh, we saw them in like 2003, and it would they were just called Beefcake featuring featuring John Kulara from the Ataris because he's apparently in both bands. And they had said while they were on stage that they had a new album that was like done coming out, blah, blah, blah. This is 2003. Um, So I mentioned that in the video and somebody in the band actually saw it and they said, hey, yeah, we have the album. We have the tracks done. And I was like, please send it to me. And uh, he last I heard, he couldn't figure out how to use Google Drive. So hopefully uh, if you need (laughs) if you need help, man, just please message me again. I would love to hear the follow up. No, it's I'm pretty sure like. Why would somebody pretend they're in the band Beefcake, man? Of all the bands we talk about. It might be the guy, but maybe he's trolling you. <laughs> it could be, but I, I have, I'm going to have a little bit of faith in humanity and faith in, uh, in Beefcake and hope that he's telling the truth because the world needs another Beefcake album, man. <sighs> so let's move on. Like I said, that's going to be my S tier. Uh, we've got another album that I'm pretty fond of. We've got Dynamite Boy. Uh, Finders Keepers. This came out in 1999. Also, um, this one. There's a Dynamite Boy album coming up. That's my favorite by the band. But I still think this one's pretty solid. Like the first two songs, Julie H and Charmed. Good song. Someone forgot. Um, I I put a note. This reminds me of somebody. And I was gonna think of who it reminded me of over time, but I never got there. Uh, but whatever. This is going in my B tier. I had it in A up to like probably yesterday, but. I love Dynamite Boy. I love this album. So B tier for me. Dylan, what about you? As long as I live, I can never forget. Super solid. Uh, 
really good debut album um and i uh mirror your statement regarding the next one uh yeah this is an a this was it was close to being an s but uh that other one uh yeah something might be going on there um these guys these guys are real good they got into the uh uh the early 2000s pop punk uh phase a little bit early um i think they were a little bit ahead of their time almost i agree man they like this album sounds like it should have come out in like 2001 2002 with the mtv craze um so let's move on here we've got another band i think was ahead of their time Oh, we've got Glass Eater. There's Seven Years Bad Luck. I think this is the debut album. This is another band that we featured in Off the Radar. But Dylan, I'll, I'll let you talk about this one first. I think you know where I'm going to go with this one, but I think you're going to be pretty different. So uh, let's hear it. Break my heart here, man. <laughs> I must have gotten like amnesia or something because i think i said in the off the radar video that i kind of like these guys um i don't i really don't man i i think they're trying to do the at the drive-in thing but they just don't do it as well uh the singer especially that the clean vocals dude uh or if it's this i don't know if they have two singers or one guy's doing both of them the screaming and the clean vocals um I don't like screaming, and uh, the the guy's voice is real whiny, and like he, he can't stay in key and stuff. Uh, Betting on a loser uh, is a pretty decent like pop punk style song, but all the other stuff I can't really get into, so it's a D for me. Damn D. All right, I I think the sc- the guy who screams and singer, I think they're two different people. I think this, okay. I'm pretty sure the guy who screams left the band after this album and. There's a reason the the other ones that come out after this are, are pretty different, but Seven Years Bad Luck, man, that is a total banger. And then you got the Skid Row cover on the end. I, I don't think there's a single bad song on here. Now, I will say this, that I definitely don't like this album as much as I used to. Uh, I'm going to go B on it. Like, it's, it's not a style of music I listen to anymore. I don't really listen to anything with screaming, but... Back when this came out in 2001, I was like head over heels for this band. They were one of my favorites. So for that reason, I'll let Nostalgia push my hand a little bit. I'll push them into the B tier. I think they deserve it. So let's move on to this next band here, uh, Junction 18. We've got This Vicious Cycle. And I texted you about this band earlier today because I did not know what to do with this. This band was like absolutely huge in my area when this was coming out. So I'll let you take it first. Uh, This Vicious Cycle, uh, 2000, what are your thoughts? Um, It's pretty good. Uh, It's it's a pretty standard early 2000s pop punk album. I almost... uh, We have Ramones Core. I almost want to brand a lot of these bands coming up as newfound glory core. Um, Cause I think a lot of them just are kind of just aping newfound glory. Uh, some of them have higher success rates than others. Um, it's pretty inoffensive. I like a few of the songs, uh, the ones that really stood out, uh, sweet steps, granite street, night fight and lost in Adeline. I thought were pretty good. Um, but on the whole, I mean, it's it doesn't really stand out from the crowd too much. Uh, it's a B tier album for me. Okay, I'm not too far away from you, man. I'm going C. Uh, I even like I even played around with the D tier on this one just because I remember people went so crazy over this when it came out, and I I was always kind of like, eh, it's all right. It's no glass eater, so I'm gonna put it in the uh, in the C tier for me but i like all the same songs you said i think grand street knife fight is the uh the standout on this one i think that was their single so here we go man we we were talking about this a little earlier we were hinting at it but this is somewhere in america dynamite boys 2001 album and dude catching on has to be like one of the best openers like for a pop punk album of all time like that riff is absolutely killer um, I'm surprised it only has 71,000 plays and AV99 is 115. Little Bobby, 185. I mean, Catching On for me is the best Dynamite Boy song, uh, hands down. So 
I'm I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna go A on this one. I'm saving my S for a couple that are coming up. But this is a fantastic pop punk album. Had this on off the radar. I feel like I'm saying that quite a quite a bit. But I'm a big Fearless Records fan and uh, Somewhere in America A tier. Uh, Dylan, thoughts? Put it on the board. It's an S. Uh, yeah, there he is. Pretty, pretty solid uh, progression from their first album. I think the guitar parts are a lot better on this album than the first one. There's a lot of cool little riffs and stuff. Um, yeah, the opener, No Way Out, Last Chance, Strive. I think they all have really interesting guitar parts that um, a lot of bands in this style of pop punk scene weren't really playing. Um, it's a really good album. I like it a lot. Uh, I also like the singer doesn't isn't like all whiny and shit like a lot of these other bands. So, <laughs> yeah. Dynamite Boy is a cool band, man. And more people should have listened to these guys. The album, like after this, I can never really get into the self titled one, but uh, it's still decent. But I mean, guys, if you haven't heard Somewhere in America and you like pop punk, just go go check it out immediately. All right. So moving on here, Dylan. This, in my opinion, Big Wig, Invitation to Tragedy, this is the best album on this entire list. and that That's just my humble opinion. Uh, I'm a Big Wig fanboy. Uh, Sink or Swim is crazy, killer, like uh, fast, uh, like uh, solo riff through the intro. It's awesome. You got Moosh, which I used to like. I used to throw it on mixtapes for girls, but it's a little cringy nowadays. Um, Alone in New Jersey, man, this, this is an S tier all the way. For me, best album on the list. What are you doing with it? I actually have the exact same three songs picked out as you do. <laughs> um, I do want to add that Moosh has a kind of. It reminds me a little bit of like new. Fu- uh, sorry, no use for a. Ni- yeah, no use for name. Yeah. a little bit. Uh, that mid period, no use for name stuff. Uh, it's a. I like it a lot more than the first album. I think this was another band that left the label for a few albums and then came back. Um, and I think this was their like return to Fearless album. Um, I like it a lot. I think that uh, it's a lot more melodic and like almost poppy than the first album. Uh, and I definitely like. I'm. Going back to the Wilhelm scream, I definitely hear what would become a Wilhelm scream on this album with a lot of the guitar parts. Um, it's an A-tier album. Okay, I'll take it. I, I remember um, when I would see these guys when I was like a teenager, uh, the singer is the one who was like playing all the solos and stuff, like which is kind of like Chris Hanna from Propagandi. Uh, it always blew me away when I was a kid, but you know, guys, check out this album if you haven't heard it. This is the best album on the list. Dylan puts it in A, but you know, it is what it is. It's a great album. So, moving along here, um, we've got "Black Dress in a B Movie" by Keepsake. I've never heard of this album before we did this list. Uh, Dylan, you've got some thoughts on this one. Let me hear them. Newfound Glory Corps, back at it. Uh, these guys are from the same town as uh, Newfound Glory for some reason. They're really committed to the bit. Um, <laughs> again, it's not bad. It's n- it sounds like anything else. I feel like um, Fearless like must have really wanted to sign Newfound Glory, but they just couldn't land them, so they signed every band that sounded like a Newfound Glory cover band almost. Um, I think these guys aren't as good as some of the other ones. Uh, C. Okay. You, you're higher on them than I am, dude. You have Adam and C. I'm going D. I even considered F. I think Newfound Glory is a, uh, pretty generous comparison for them. I hear a lot of like the, the bands that Victory Records was signing around this time, like Spital Field, uh, a couple others, like they're, they're more emo leaning than I think Newfound Glory is. So I I went back and forth between F and D, but I think they're better than Lonely Kings and, and White Cap. So let's we'll put them in the D tier for now. Maybe we adjust if something is better or worse. But uh 
Up next, we've got the band that I'm wearing the uh, shirt for. We've got From the Ashes of Big Wig. We've got two former members, The Gentle Art of Making Enemies. Uh, I actually, I still own this CD. I didn't even realize, but I pulled it out for this list. Uh, this is my other S tier. This is this is another album that I was going to use for Off the Radar. I think this is like right on par, like a little below Invitation to Tragedy, but I think it's better than um, Unmerry Melodies for Big Wig. You've got uh, Walk Away, Answers, October 10th, The Game. Uh, it's got a lot of the aggression of Big Wig, but it also has some more melodic points. It's Some of these songs lean very heavily into pop punk. Well, this is my, I think it's my last S. I think we're doing four. So yeah, Near Miss, Gentle Art of Making Enemies. Dylan, thoughts? Yeah, I like these guys a lot. Um, this is another one that got reissued on people of punk rock people of punk rock keeping the fearless records <laughs> legacy alive they're, they're like me man they're my people <laughs> <laughs> yeah these guys are super good uh this is a this is my final s tier album go. this is the one that bumped um what was it bumped dynamite boy or beefcake beefcake it bumped okay. beefcake out of the s tier um it's super good. Uh, it's almost like Rise Against meets early two thousands pop punk. Um, but these guys are a lot. These guys are a good band, unlike Rise Against. Uh, Walk Away, Answers, Separated to All My Friends. Those are my favorite songs on it. Yeah, I, I think you can listen to this one straight through. Though this is such a good album. But I don't. I don't know how these guys were not popular because like. The way I remember, like this album came out, and I wasn't even aware of it for like a year or two. So there was the no album hype. titles, kind of stupid, but I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. The gentle art of making enemies. You maybe would have thought it was like uh, an emo or something record, but this is fast pop punk, some big wig flavor for sure. So go check it out. S for both of us. I think other than Gob, it's the only S for both of us. So yeah, let's let's move along here. We're almost at the end. We've got another Glass Eater album. This is the self-titled record. I believe this is with the new Screamer. There's not much screaming at all on here. Uh, Dylan, I'll let you take it away from your uh, Florida boys here. Oh, man, I got I to gotta do my countrymen wrong. Or uh, my statemen, I don't know. I think it's a little better than the first one. Um... I had high hopes listening to the first half of it because it was a lot more pop punk leaning, and I think that of the two aspects of their sound between the poppy stuff and the screamy stuff, that the poppy stuff is the stronger half. Uh, but then the back half of the album kind of kind of dashed my hopes a little bit with all the screaming stuff going on. D tier for Glass Eater. D tier. Okay. See. I, I remember when this came out, I was so disappointed. I was like, man, where'd all the screaming go? Where'd all the, like, the pop punk go? This is like a lot more of like an emotional, heavy record. But listening back, I, I bumped it up. I, I was in D. Uh, where did I end up here? Sorry, guys. We, we printed these out. There's so many albums. I was losing track. Uh, I moved it up to C. I'm going C here. I think the second song is the best song on here. Medicine, we've all heard a thousand times. It was on a million comps. So uh I don't know. I mean, I think the first Glass Eater is, is leaps and bounds ahead of this one, but if you want a more refined, more modern-sounding Glass Eater, then this is the one for you. All right, so two albums to go here, Dylan, and I'm not sure you're going to like either of them, but we'll see. Uh, up next, we've got uh, Knockout, Searching for Solid Ground, came out in 2002. This, I don't think it's that bad of a record, man. I think Breakaway and Aftermath are decent songs. Uh, the album cover is terrible. Um, but I remember I, I got this when it came out around this time. I, I didn't really care for it. I heard some catchy melodies here and there. But it's it's by the numbers pop punk. Uh, but, I mean, nowadays people are itching for that early 2000s sound. So this may, uh, this may scratch the itch for some people. Where, where are you putting it? This is the worst of the newfound glory core albums. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this one I'll agree with you on. 
I don't think the cover art's that bad. It's probably one of the better aspects of this album. Um, Solid Ground is okay, and I think the, some of the guitar parts on uh, Breakaway are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's a C-tier album. It's not horrible. It's not good. Yeah, I didn't say it, but I'm also I'm also going C-tier on uh, Knockout. So here we go, Dylan. We knocked this one out. We're on the last album here. We've got Anatomy of a Ghost. Evanes, I think, is the name of this album. Evanescence. Uh, I, I never listened to this before this video. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not my style at all. I don't think it's your style. So uh, what are your thoughts on it? This is fucking garbage, man. I hated this. Uh, whiny vocals. Uh, shitty at the drive-in knockoff once again. Very disappointed with in you, Anatomy of a Ghost. I, I think they, I think they have quite a few albums too. I could be wrong, but uh, I remember these guys popping up. This uh, is the only one on Spotify. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, I mean, there's a lot of like bands in this like genre like the the album cover reminds me of poison the well with the font like that uh so i could be mixing them up but i'm also going f so here's our list i i don't know how long this video is i had to take a cut because i had the wrong glass eater art uh but i think we're i think we're under an hour which was the goal um s and a dylan looking pretty similar for both of us overall your thoughts on the list thoughts on fearless um yeah, it was an interesting experience. It was kind of, uh, I feel like how you felt about listening to all the Ramones albums. Uh, <laughs> at times, I was feeling the same way about this. Just because uh, for, for as much good shit as they put out, there was a lot of, I feel like they, they may have had a lack of oversight or quality control over some <laughs> of this stuff. Because uh, there's some uh, curious decisions on what releases they put out um the early 2000s stuff like i said i feel like they were trying really hard to cash in on that early 2000s pop punk craze um but the results are varied um i do think it's cool that they branched out into like post hardcore type stuff and things like that instead of just releasing the same five bands over and over again so i'll give them props for that um but uh yeah i mean over on the whole it's a pretty solid uh collection of albums i would say uh a few of them would probably be in like my top like 50 albums of all time that's some pretty high praise yeah so i i in like the 90s, Fearless was definitely one of those band, the, uh, labels that I would collect, like everything they put out, like, you know, Epitaph, Fat, Nitro, Lookout. I mean, there's there's a couple, but Fearless for me was one of those bands I just, I, don't know, I keep saying bands, albums, that <laughs> labels, what am I doing? <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, guys, if you have not heard uh, How Far Shall It Takes You, Beefcake Rejected, Big Wig, Invitation to Tragedy, and your miss gentle art of making enemies. Go check those out. Um, I considered making a playlist for this, but it took me about four hours to get all the uh, audio clips and transitions ready for this, so I skimped on the playlist. But if you want some recommendations, you could always uh, message at Screeching Bottle Rocket over on Instagram, or you can message me. I might answer. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap up the list here. Uh, coming up, we've got some more of that guess the song thing we're doing. We're doing an episode tomorrow. And uh, we're doing the uh, hit songs uh, tier list that Dylan came up with. We're going to pick um, some punk bands most well-known or uh, hit songs. We're going to put them in a tier list just like this. And then we've got uh, No Use for a Name tier list coming up at the end of March. So make sure you subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and uh, comment down here what your favorite Fearless Records releases. And we will see you next time. And don't say Lonely Kings. That fucking thing sucks. <laughs>